Hi, and welcome back to episode six of The Previews. I'm your host, Ray Sam Donkaham, and it's been quite a while now. Uh, our last episode was in August, actually, with Rob Fitz, and if you haven't checked out that episode, definitely do so on our YouTube page. But in the studio right now, I have the one and the only Bob McCarthy. Woo, that's it? That's the only introduction? No, the introduction <laughs> is this. I am here with the award-winning, that's right, the award-winning, the three-time pizza-eating world heavyweight champion of Brockton, Massachusetts, the bodacious, the host with the most hotter than a burnt piece of toast, coming you from coast to coast, Bob McCarthy, executive producer of The Bob Show. Check it online at thebobshow.net. See, like, that's the thing. Like, Bob, you're just so experienced with being, like, that host that's, like, bringing the energy and... I'm just here like, oh, yeah, this is cool. But 16 years. You'll get there. Years. You'll get there. 16 years of doing all this different television. But you know what, Ray Sam? Yeah. It's, it's blocking everybody out. You have to learn how to block everybody out and just bang and mm. do it. You know? And it, it, it's a master. You know what? Sound advice, and I'll definitely take that. Yeah. But I want to know, how did you get started in the show business that you're in right now? All right. Well, that's a great question, and I'm glad to answer it for you. Um, how I got in the business was this. Um, I'm from Billerica, Massachusetts, born and raised, um, and I always wanted to get into pro wrestling. I knew that's what I wanted to do. That was the goal. Um, ever since I was a little kid, like 10 years old, I knew all the way through high school, man, I'm getting out. It's going to be wrestling. I'll yeah. go to the Boston Garden. I said, that, no matter what. Um, I came to Lowell around 1999. My father told me about the Lowell Cable Access. Um, when I was in Biltworker, I felt like, eh, if I did a show, not only people talk about wrestling a lot, so I'm like, eh, if I do a show, it might fail, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really, it's not that I didn't have the confidence, I just didn't know really a lot about television, I didn't know about anything. Mm. So I said, you know what, I looked around, I'm like, nobody knows me here in Lowell, so if the show stinks, then, you know what, goodbye, see you later. So, uh, <laughs> and, and it was the complete opposite of that. It just went, it was the complete opposite. It was like a God set. It was like God telling me, dude, you need to do this. You know what I mean? You have the talent, you have the ability, you know how to do things, how to treat people, how to play the game. You need to do television. So I came here and I started the pro wrestling talk show. Um, one of my first major interviews was George the Animal Steel. And he never talked on camera his entire career. It was always, oh. rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> so to get him to actually speak for 10 minutes, yeah. that was an incredible, for my show, for my television show in Lowell Mass, it was like, wow. So it just, and I got to interview local wrestlers. Then I made a demo tape of the characters that I can do. Um, but before that, I actually sent it to the WWE. They called me. And because of that, them calling me about my demo tape, I told a promoter, I said, I want to be a pro wrestling manager. He said, come on down. Wow. So the television and the demo tapes got me in my first shot of pro wrestling as a manager. That's awesome. And once I got one show, another promoter hired me. Bang, before you know it, I'm in the business. Now I'm a manager every weekend. Um, so now the television show got me in the pro wrestling business. So cable access got me to the dream I wanted to accomplish. Um, and then through that period, um, I did about probably about you know, seven, ten years in wrestling, all these different kind of television shows. And I got an audition with the World Wrestling Federation. I was on the first episode of Tough Enough. So my demo tape was played on Raw and SmackDown. It was the greatest dream in the world. And they ended the segment with my interview. And I, I cannot tell you to be in New York City in Times Square and, and then be on MTV. And, and, and to have me, it's like, wow. I, I couldn't believe my dream come true racing. I'm like, I came home, I thought my life was gonna be over because I couldn't believe within a year, two years, you know, I started my show in 99 in 2001, I got an audition with the World Wrestling Federation. Like, who does that? Wow. You know what I mean? So that helped out so much. And then, you know, I, I, I got sick of wrestling. I got tired of it. I wasn't going where I needed to go. So 2007, I created The Bob Show, which is a sketch comedy show with celebrity interviews. And it's, it's won me awards. It's been fantastic. And it's been a lifelong dream. So mm -hmm. it's been great. All right. Well, awesome. Um, Bob. I really do aspire to be you or where you're at right now yeah. uh, one day. With, with keeping your hair. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to lose your hair. All right. Okay. Make sure to keep those along the way. Yeah. But definitely, I want to know more about like how the Bob Show came about. Like I know that you said that like wrestling, you got tired of it. Yeah. But like sketch comedy, like who just decides to do sketch comedy? I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't, it's a very, it's a very good question that you're asking me because uh, I'm like, uh, watching wrestling, I've always been a fan of television and I've always been a fan of movies and comedy and, uh, you know, like Jackie Gleason and Rodney Dangerfield and, and, and watching these guys and, and I, as a kid, I was like, man, I could be a TV, a little TV star, meaning as a kid, I knew it was like, man, I watched it and I was like, I could do that, you know? Um, 
at, when I was doing one show called Live from Law, we had bands. We were doing it every Tuesday night at LTC. Mm -hmm. Every Tuesday night we had bands in there, and we were doing, and then once we did the bands, we started hosting, um, I set up hosting stand-up comedy shows in Lowell. And I started doing commercials for that. And one of the commercials that I, I, I fast-forwarded the music, I fast-forwarded, no, sorry, the music, the footage, and it's like I'm speeding it up and I made it sound funny, like I have the chipmunks. And I was starting to experiment with being funny doing the commercials. I don't know why one day I said, let me do a sketch comedy show. I put an ad out. I got a bunch of actors. They came in. Hmm. A lot of it was improv, and it came out great. But one of the awesome. first comedy sketches called The Dr. Philly Show. I was like a ghetto Dr. Phil. It, it came out great. They showed up again and again and just got better and better. And I, I, honestly, it, it just I think just by doing a little comedy videos, I decided, let me see if I could do I've always been an actor. So I said, let me get out of wrestling because wrestling is all acting. Yeah. So let me take the actor and I could do different voices and characters and put on different wigs and all that. So let me take the actor, put him in an actor setting and let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember back in like uh, the day too, like I like, used to volunteer at LTC and after I would be like, oh, let me volunteer for the Bob show. And after before I was just a camera operator, right? And after I was seeing like all like, these like actors that you were bringing in and after you said that you put an ad out and like they're all local people. But with these people, like they were just some of the most wittiest, smartest people, just like in the room, just like keep on going and going back and forth. I'm just wondering, like, where do you find these people? You said local. Honestly, I had one girl for three years that lived at the end of Connecticut. Her mother-in-law lived in New York. The mother-in-law would get up at six o'clock, go to Connecticut. They would drive three and a half hours the Bob and be there for six hours, didn't mm -hmm. complain, nothing they want. That's how bad they liked the show. Awesome. So I got people from Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont. I mean, they came from all around. So New York, Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, all around Massachusetts, they came down. And what I think what happens is they see some of the videos, they see some of the stuff that we've already done and be like, okay. And, the, and, and as far as my knowledge, and, and I'm not saying I'm the only sketch comedy show in Massachusetts, New England, I'm the only one that I've seen doing sketch comedy in Massachusetts, to my, my knowledge, and I think a lot of people know that, and they want to come down and do comedy. Yeah. They want to do acting. I mean, there's a lot of acting productions, but no one's doing like SNL, comedy, parody, blah, blah, blah. Let's change it up a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and it's just something I think by, you know, I don't think I'm the funniest guy in the world. I don't think I'm the greatest writer in the world, but I think that you'll be entertained. That's the one thing I can say about The Bob Show. You won't get bored by it. I mean, you, what, what is my crazy mind going to think of next? Well, that's why they want to watch it. What's going to happen next? Yeah. I mean, definitely, like, uh, you have a show. Um, you started it back in, like, 2007, you said. Yes, it's 2016 yeah. right now when we're recording this. Wow. Yeah. It's a long time. Ten years is about to like, be approaching up on us right yeah. now. And yeah. is there anything big that we can expect oh, from the yeah, Bob Show? Oh, absolutely. This year is going to be the best and most biggest year of all, 2016. We're going to take it to new heights that we've never seen before. And it's go this is the year. And, and really, the vision and everything I have planned for 2016, 10-year anniversary of the Bob Show. And, and it will just take me out of the local circuit and bring me to the highest heavens where, you know, you'll be calling me up and I'll be saying, Ray, Sam, who? <laughs> <laughs> and then just click and then maybe change the phone number or something. Oh, and it, wow. That's how big we're looking at it. I mean, that's that's how big it's going to get. I Goals, mean, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I mean, like, definitely I'm thinking, like, um, oh, like, I'd come down to, like, I used to live in Lowell and effort. Coming down to, like, the Bob show was never that big of an issue for me. You know, mm -hmm. I loved being there. Yeah. You know, and just being like, saying like, oh, I keep on hearing you talk about like, oh, I'm trying to bring it to like cable yeah, right now. Yeah. I'm trying to bring it to like large right. networks. Yeah, a lot, of work, like, a lot of work, a lot of work, yeah. And I'm thinking like, oh man, like one day there's going to be like a whole bunch of executives in one room. You're going to be showing them these clips. And I'm thinking like, wow, I'm going to be in one of those sketches. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Yeah. That's awesome and i'm like yeah. i'm really looking forward to like seeing it like um get big in the future and i'm definitely hoping to be a part of one, at least one of those sketches absolutely absolutely no no at least five of those sketches yeah <laughs> in, in the future well you are one of my right hand man says there's, there's there's so much i could say about you are one of the greatest assets i've had in my production company i gotta say that not only i mean you started as a camera operator and then i had you do some acting and you're so good as an actor that I can't have you behind the camera all the time. I actually need you as my Eddie Murphy. I need you as my I'll Arsenio Hall. I need you to be in front of the camera. I, I think one of the funniest things, I think, I can't say if it's the first one, it could have been, I think it was the blind date sketch where Michael Z was yeah. touching your face <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing? Your reaction, bang, you sold me. He's an actor, we gotta use him again. So Thanks. it was just, you had a little line, one line, 
probably 10 seconds. But that was enough for me to say, this kid's talented. I need to do more with him in front of the camera. You know, and I love doing it like every single time. But I know you put a lot of effort into like all your sketches because not only do you like write them, you produce them, direct them, you shoot them. Like the whole deal. The whole, whole deal. deal. The whole deal. Which is awesome. The whole deal. Amazing. You gotta do. You gotta do it. You gotta do great. it. You gotta become the lead. That's why I call it the Bob Show. I do all the writing, the editing, directing, lighting, camera work. I mean, there's other people that do you know camera work and stuff like that. And, but the main thing is that I, I had to do that because you know. It's if, you know, before, in the beginning, when I was doing my wrestling show, I had other people edit it, and it would just take longer. And they were like, dude, you need to learn editing. And then once you learn the editing, it's like, well, I can do this myself. I don't mm -hmm. need to depend on other people. And I think that's very important when you're doing something like this. You want to be able to do as much as you can. You know what I mean? And, and it didn't, never overloaded me. I love editing. I, mm -hmm. I love writing it, you know, and all that stuff. So, and I've had different people write things and things like that. So you try to, I've had different people do interviews. So I, I've tried to share the wealth on the show. It's not just me. So, but I think it's important as a producer that you learn everything you can. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to realize as you get older, you can't depend on other people. If it's your project, your vision, your goal, your life, you need to put your hands in it. And, and that's, that's what will make it to the top. Yeah, and you know? definitely with, especially with sketch comedy, let's be real, not everything goes according to plan. No. Or the first time, ne nothing's going to be the same. No. No. And I'm just wondering, like, as a director and like, as a person who's been doing this for, for so many years, how has like, your improvis your uh, improv skills like kind of improved. Oh, it's incredible. I really, I, I think if I didn't have that training in wrestling, um, the wrestling is so much an important part of what I do now because of that environment. I've had actors come in and then they don't show up or they, they had something happen and they cancel. They tell me on Friday, we're shooting on Saturday. So if that one person is gone, that messes up the whole script. Mm -hmm. So now we have to learn how to improvise. And, and now these actors, their brain is all set. And that one person is now out of the equation where they're delivering their lines, what do we do? And so thank God these actors were so good. They were so great that they can you know, think on the fly. Some of their stuff was better than the stuff that I've written. I actually you know, want improv more than anything. I, I've had the guys in the beginning, the improv was incredible. Then I've had some people come in where they're like, they never did improv. So, and then I got, now they come in and they go, you know, Bob, we've took some improv classes. We want to try it. So it really is. We just did Densmore. And one of the last scenes we did with Ray Tomasio and Harrison Blake, they started, the, the car went away and they started improv and they're like, well, we'll never get them. And they go, yeah, there's a lot of one way streets around here and, and they're talking about Lowell. And I yeah. thought it was funny. I started laughing <laughs> because it's right. If you're in downtown Lowell and, and you don't never been in downtown Lowell, it's, yeah. it used to be, well, actually it's a lot of the two ways now. It used to be a lot of one way streets, you know? So um, yeah, it was just, that's a good joke. You're, you're a lot like Lowell. You're, you're one way, you know, you're like the streets <laughs> in Lowell one way. So um, the improv is so important, especially yeah. when someone doesn't show up. And, and they might say, you know what, Bob, you know what, I got something to make it a little funnier. You know, no disrespect to you. Can I, make, can I think of a joke or something? I'll say, sure, and I'll listen to them, you know, because I'm not always, you know what I mean? I didn't go to school to be a comedy writer. I don't think I'm the best at it. But, you know, until these people stop showing up, it became successful. So, I mean, until they stop showing up and not liking it, it's still going to keep going on. Yeah. You know? And uh, definitely, like, you are a very busy man. Yeah. Uh, you definitely get around as much as you can. You go to conventions, you go to like uh, wrestling events as well, yeah. and you've met a lot of celebrities. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, uh, are there any ones that like really like stick out, or like ones that you remember that were like, yes, that was a great interview with this well, person? Well, I mean, geez, I mean, Hulk Hogan was has been my hero since I was a little kid. He, he's headlining the Boston Garden. Two years ago, I got to interview him, and he he I did my introduction, and he stopped the tape. He goes, hey, man, I, I can't do another wrestling show. I'm on the contract. I go, no, this is not a wrestling show. He goes, when you did that introduction, you have the best announcer's voice I ever heard. Hulk Hogan is saying that. Do you know how many people have interviewed him in the last 40 years? And then I interviewed him, and he goes, when I heard that voice, brother, you're like Mean Gene times 10. So I meet my idol, and he puts me over on my television show. Wow. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that, you know what I mean? So to, to, and then I interviewed Dan Aykroyd the same year, you know what I mean? And then I've interviewed, you know, Jay and Silent Bob. I just interviewed John Wesley Ship in December who plays The Flash, you know? Oh and he's on the CW network now as Henry Allen. I mean, there's so many, I, I, I don't know if I can go down the history and list of these, these great people. The wrestlers are, are the most exciting to me because I know all their careers. The New Age Outlaws, you know what I mean? Uh, Bruno San Martino, I mean, uh, the, the Divas, Brutus Beefcake, I mean, Greg Valentine, 
you know, uh, there's just so many of them. Jim Cornette was a great interview I had this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, my introduction was so good, he took $20 out of his pocket and he goes, you read it just like I wrote it, here you go. And then he takes the money back. Like this is, <laughs> this is I get celebrities putting me over mm. on my show. They're telling me more than once I have it recorded saying, man, you got a great voice. You did a good, and I just, you know, when I do the interview with them, I want it to be fun and exciting and I'm not boring and, and I joke with them. And, and, and that's what my show's about, it, it's yeah. having fun. And like the people do, like look like they're having. And, and let me blast. tell you, Christian Bale, Batman. I interviewed him. Nice. He was one of my biggest ones. Yet when they had the fighter premiere in Lowell, so Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale came down here, and I got an into the the, the, the uh, they went to this uh, gym in Lowell, which is the next street over where I was living, and I got to go in there and got to interview Christian Bale. So that was huge. That's sweet. Um, you know what I mean? Dan Aykroyd, the Blues Brothers, for to be to be doing sketch comedy and to interview Dan Aykroyd who started out in the first season of Saturday Night Live. I mean, I cannot tell you what an incredible experience it is. So there's a lot of great, That's great awesome. history there. Yeah. But besides the Bob show too, and then like you are an amazing host, like you could basically host a show right now. And yeah, after I would be by like, myself. Yeah, I'd, I could make I the mind. whole hour entertaining. <laughs> we don't even need him. Pin <laughs> on me, pin it on me. You see this, this face is money, kid, <laughs> money. Well, what other shows have you produced, man? Like, I want to know. I did. Like, I was else? on Live from Lowell. We had bands in there, local bands, and all original artists' music. And, that, and that's what we want, like to do on The Bob Show, is to do a lot of more local original artists and get them out there. So that we also did the PGM show, which caused a lot of controversy in Lowell. That's a mm. whole other story that we don't even have time to get into that. But no. I, didn't, I didn't do a lot of years on that. It was very short. Yeah. Um, I also did my first show, which is called Total Access Wrestling, T-A-W. That was my pro wrestling talk show, and that's where I get to interview a lot of the great wrestlers, Jerry the King Lawler, King Kong, King Kong Bundy, the Gundam Giant, Kamala, all these guys I grew up watching, I had on my show. So there's no greater, there's no greater thing that you can get for that. Like I watch you, and now I get to work with you. Mm -hmm. I might not be hired by WWE right now, but I've had all these WWE guys on my show. Mm -hmm. I got to work with them. Maybe not on their level, I got to work with them on my level, my show. They're a part of my history, my career. Mm -hmm. And that makes me happy. You know, I just interviewed Santa Claus and I said, Santa, you know, I, I don't want anything for Christmas. I said, I'm alive. And, and you know what? I look back at everything I've accomplished and that is the greatest gift he could ever give me. Just my memories of what I've already done. So that, I just wanted to say that. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, one thing I want to like actually mention here on the previews is yeah. that we want people to connect with the filmmakers that you see on this show. Right. And Bob, what is the best way to get in contact with you? Like anyone who wants to work with you, whether it's be like uh, actors, writers, and Yep, absolutely. Cameras. You know, if you want to get in know. contact with me, um, my photo is at every post office in, in Massachusetts, a big sign that says wanted, and, and they're looking for me right now. And, and because of this telecast on DATV, on Drake It Access, the greatest public access facility in Drake It, Massachusetts, and probably around the world, DATV right here, they, they will tell you, you can go to actorsclub at yahoo.com. That's the email that I do because we have actors and we're a club. Actorsclub at yahoo.com. That's where you can email me if you want to be a production assistant, an actor on the show, if you just want to help out or if you just want to sit there and watch or maybe carry my bags. Maybe I might have you get me a, a cup of coffee. Ooh, yeah, a cup of coffee. Uh -huh. Well, you heard it here first, folks. So, Bob, what kind of clips are we going to be seeing today? Okay, so you said, Bob, bring me some clips. What we're going to show right now, um, what we got is, uh, we got a clip of Densmore, um, which a production you were in, which is a sitcom comedy I produced about a couple of bumbling cops trying to, you know, make it their way. You know, Densmore is an alcoholic, ex-divorcee cop that just doesn't like life and just tries to do his job the way he can do it without getting himself arrested. So we're going to show you a clip of Densmore, and then I have some highlights of interviews. It's a highlight video of some of the interviews I've done this year um, throughout 2015. So uh, this shows the previews. Let's give you the Bob Show previews. Man, you're unbelievable. Every time we eat, get you on assignment, you're lying down, smoking cigarettes, getting hammered. Now let's go, dude. We got a massage pile to raid. Ah, gentlemen, welcome to the Palace of Pleasure, Pain and Discomfort Massage Parlor, where your pain is our pleasure. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm 23, blue-eyed with big ambitions. You know what I mean? 
Did you really bust that party up with the gorilla suit and a thong? Don't believe, you know, half of what you read. Oh, free! <laughs> what you do with? You got the gun, why didn't you shoot him? I should've shot him. Yeah, you should've shot him! James E. <laughs> Cornette. Look at here, you read it just like I wrote it. Wait a minute, I'll uh, send me a bill. I need a receipt on that. But Joe, we had an agreement. Yes, yes, just send me the uh, receipt and I'll have some paperwork on it and I'll have a paper trail. The old Boston Guard, yeah. and I guess they just built the Fleet Center, whatever they call it now, changed a bunch of different names, but built it right over the top of it, but still got the same floor. Man, man oh man, 1979, to like 93, I was in the Boston Garden every month. I mean, that's a, that's a long run. Ah, the Mac Daddy O, and we're here with the mob. You're on the Bob Show, and I'm here with Bob. We are the ones, and forget the rest, you're here with Oscar, and we're at Fan Fest. We're at Fan Fest, and we're kicking it live. You're watching Bob Show with Fan Fest 5. The action is here. Everyone is coming out for this incredible event. We got Gorilla Grodd. Grodd, are you ready for tonight's incredible event this whole weekend of Super Mega Fest? Grodd is always ready, but the question is, are you ready for Grodd? <laughs> well, this is what happens, folks, when you misbehave at Super Mega Fest. They lock you in. They lock you in here, and this is everything that can happen here. So, uh, hey. We'll, we'll be back for right after this. Who's your daddy? <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm your daddy. It's Bob McCarthy here, your host with the most hotter than a burnt piece of toast, coming to you from coast to coast. Now, you work once a year. Well, I work all year. You work all year. But my major night is Christmas Eve. He's originally what I came for. Everywhere I go, he's I'm right behind him. I know he's the man to follow. I like to say, uh, stay in school and uh, don't drive past the speed limit. And we are back. Uh, hopefully you aren't like too hurt from laughing yourself uh, to death after watching these videos because Bob McCarthy your videos are too funny, and where can we see like the rest of the Bob Show? All right, well, hey folks, I wanna thank you so much for having me on the show, Ray Sam. It is a complete honor, not only to be on your show, the previews, but to be right here at Drake It Access Television, the greatest facility that I've ever been a part of. It's so great to have the Bob Show come back home, come back to Drake It. We're on here eight years ago, and now we're coming back, so it is gonna be a great homecoming for our ninth season, our 10th year, to be back on this beautiful town of Drake It, Massachusetts. I wanna thank Thank you so much for having me, Bob McCarthy, as a guest in your beautiful town, your beautiful studio, and the beautiful TV host of Ray Sam and the previews. Remember, folks, follow us on Twitter. That's right, twitter.com backslash the Bob Show Net. And subscribe to us on YouTube. That's right, youtube.com backslash Megastar Pro. And as always, you can check us out online at www.thebobshow.net. Thank you. And remember, if you aren't subscribed to us already, then you can do so at the previews. We'll put like a link in our YouTube. Uh, if you're on like a uh, local access right now, just watching us, then you could also look it up the previews right there. Uh, Bob's little episode will be up by this time, obviously, since you're watching it. And we also have Facebook, the previews, Twitter, the previews. Make sure that you like at us, talk to us, tweet us. We 
really, really, really depend on like that audience interaction. We really want that to keep on going between us. And look out for season two because that's starting in May. And what's it right now, January? And we got, we got a couple of months too then. After, I also want to do something and announce something called Project 3. And that's all I'm going to say about Ooh. it. Yeah, no, I got, I got to build the suspense build there. build the suspense up. Yeah, yeah I agree. All right. Well, uh, Bob, thank you so much for being on the show. Complete honor. Thank you so much, Ray Sam. You are my right-hand man, Ray Sam. Um, like I said, again, it is a complete honor to be here. Thank you guys for having me as a guest. Please check out the previews. Check out the Bob show. You're going to see us on here on DATV. It has been such a great awesome 2016 we're going in this is our year buddy no Woo! dude like this is our year like i am totally serious right now <laughs> this is our year man stay tuned stay tuned we'll be back we'll be back